and welcome to video four in our series of getting started with PMPJS version three. In our last video, Patrick got us started with initializing our SP object uh, using our config file and how to use our on, on init function to uh, establish that context. And so now we're going to talk about the components themselves and how we're going to use that SP object to actually get some work done. And so we're starting here in the root of the web part where we're going to render that component. It's called PMPJS example. And so we're passing in properties to that component and that will get that component rendered onto the screen. So when we get in here, we are, as we mentioned in the last video, getting our SP context and putting it in a, a private variable for this component. And so then we can use that in the component did mount, we're going to make a call to read all file sizes. And so when we call that, private function, we're going to use the SPFI factory interface to pass in the SP object to it so that we can establish a whole new SP object that then uses dot using caching. And so the caching behavior means that any call made using the new SP cache instance will cache the contents of the call into session storage and so what we're essentially doing is extending the sp object without modifying the sp object so we're going to have this special new variable called sp cache and it works just like the sp objects but it's going to add that caching functionality but our original private variable this.sp still holds our original sp object that we could use for other calls and so this is sort of the big change with version 3 is that we can create our own unique instances of the sp object that have different uh, root urls that have different functionality any of those things can be done so now that we have that sp cache object we're going hey, to Julie, real quick does that sp yeah, cache sure. object then inherit all the observers and behaviors that were it loaded does. onto the this dot underscore sp object it does it's a good thing that you brought that up or i would have forgotten to say that it but does that's pretty cool so those. that means it's kind of additive and we can have a base kind of setup that we add to within our application as we need exactly. super cool that is super cool and that's what the new behaviors extension is all about is that extending an object and creating a new instance inheriting all those observables and then extending it but keep maintaining that original object so that we can use it for other purposes so it's like it's like having a base recipe right we have vanilla cake and we're going to take some of our vanilla cake and we're going to make it chocolate and some of our vanilla cake and we're going to make it strawberry and we have all of those pieces still so that's really a uh, powerful new functionality in v3 so now that we have that sp cache object we're going to make calls to uh the sp cache dot web dot list we're going to get by title a library name. In this case, we're just going to use the, the standard documents library that comes with the SharePoint site. We're then going to get items. Yep, there's our there's our dec uh, definition of which library we're going to use. Then we're going to get items. We're going to do a select here. We're going to very specifically say we only want the ID title, file leaf ref, and file slash length uh, fields. Now, the file slash length is an extension or an expansion of a uh, sort of like the lookup column ID so that we're going to add a dot expand saying that we want to expand out that file dot length so we can get the length of our files. And then this extension, we got rid of all the gets that used to exist in V2. And so you, you could use invocables before, but the dot gets still existed. Now the dot gets are gone and you just use the parens to invoke that object to get a response. So once we get the response, then we can, in line 64, we can use hey, the map Julie, function. Julie, real quick, why is it important sure. to always just select the fields we want to show as opposed to just bringing everything back for these objects? Because it keeps our payload a little bit smaller. Plus, we could type this. We didn't do that. Um, uh, we mentioned in video one that we have some documentation about typings. So we could have typed this so we would have had IntelliSense um, on the object that we brought back, on the items we brought back. We didn't do that, but you could do that. Um, so that's important to keep your payload small and know exactly what you're getting instead of these very large payloads, especially if you're getting lots and lots of items. Like if you're trying to get upwards of 5,000 items from a list, keeping your payload small is uh, can help overall. So oop, there's our response item. Yes our definition for our response item. 
Um, oh, you're fixing my code on the fly. I love that. Look at that. Nice. Wonderful fix. Thank you, Patrick. So now that we have our items, we're going to map through them. <laughs> Wow, you're just going cray cray now. All right, we're going to map through them and we're going to create a file item. And the file item just does some morphing uh, for the contents of the of the object so that we can then render them. So if we go down to the render function, which is on line 118, and we scroll down into that, we're essentially going to just render a table of all the files. And because we expanded that size, we can uh, render the size of the file. So we are showing the title, the name, and the size of each file in like a table. And there's a, you know, a label at the top, and there's also a button, and that button is going to update all the titles in the uh, library. So when that button is clicked, Patrick, you can scroll up and let's show people the well, update quick. title. Sorry, let's roll. Oh, quick. you're gonna. This is you what, this show is what the web part okay, looks like. Everybody. We're not gonna click yeah. the button quite yet. We'll talk about that in a second. Don't click the button. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> this is the web part Julie just described. So this is a uh, the table, and we've got the fields uh, we're pulling back. That's the title, name, size, and we got some totals going on there. Um, so this is what the the web part looks like that we've just rendered. So if you if you uh, look through that code, this is what you should end up with on your screen. And we'll come back to that uh, just as soon as Julie uh, walks us through what the actual. Uh, on click button with update titles does. Thanks, Patrick. Yep, yeah, that's gonna be our next video. So in the next one, we're gonna show how to use do that update titles method, which uses batching to make one call to update a bunch of list items all at one time. So stay tuned for that next video.